The six layers of the cerebral cortex look different depending on which stain is used to observe them, and each stain provides us with different insights into their structure. The Golgi stain stains a limited number of cells at random in their entirety. This is useful because otherwise, neurons are so densely packed that it would be difficult to observe their structure. The Nissel stain stains ribosomal RNA on the rough endoplasmic reticulum dark blue, and hence shows cell bodies and proximal dendrites. The Weigert stain shows myelinated fibers and hence axonal distribution. Let's describe some of the cell types that are found in these six cortical layers. Pyramidal cells are some of the largest neurons in the brain, and have long apical dendrites that extend towards the cortex surface, as well as a set of basal dendrites. Betz cells are the largest pyramidal cells. Stellate cells are neurons with a star-like shape formed by their dendrites. Rosehip neurons are inhibitory neurons with a bushy appearance. Now let's cover the layers. Layer 1 is closest to the outer surface, and layer 6 is just above the white matter. The layers above layer 4, the internal granular layer, are called the supragranular layers, while the layers below are called the infragranular layers. Layer 1 is called the molecular or plexiform layer and has few neurons. Neurons that are found here include rosehip neurons, some spiny stellate cells, and Kajal retzius cells. Other cells include subpeal granular layer cells and glial cells. This layer is mostly made up of transverse fibers, extensions of the dendrites of pyramidal neurons. Layer 2 is called the external granular layer, and it contains lots of stellate neurons, as well as small pyramidal neurons. Layer 3 is called the external pyramidal layer, and it is predominantly occupied by small and medium-sized pyramidal neurons. There are also other neurons with vertically oriented axons. Layer 4 is called the internal granular layer. It is occupied by stellate and pyramidal cells. Layer 5 is called the internal pyramidal layer, and it features scattered Betz cells, which, again, are large pyramidal cells. Layer 6 is called the multiform or polymorphic layer. This is the layer where cells of multiple forms merge with the white matter. The neurons in this layer differ in the shape and distribution of their axons and dendrites, as well as their physiological properties. Some of the cell types include pyramidal neurons and stellate neurons, as well as bipolar or fusiform neurons. Now that we've discussed the layers, let's do a brief overview of the connections formed by each layer. Layer 1 gets substantial input from the thalamus, specifically from matrix or M-type thalamus cells. Neurons in the first three layers are the principal targets of interhemispheric corticocortical afferent fibers. In other words, they receive communications from cortical neurons in the other hemisphere. Layer 3 is also the principal source of corticocortical efferents, meaning that it signals to other cortical neurons. Layer 4 receives inputs from core, or C-type thalamus cells. The infragranular layers primarily connect the cortex with subcortical regions. Betz cells in layer 5 are important for voluntary motor control, and this layer is especially well developed in motor cortical areas. Betz cells are found in the primary motor cortex, and their axons travel through the internal capsule, then through the brainstem and spinal cord, forming the corticospinal tract. They also project to the basal ganglia, the reticular formation, the cerebellum, and other areas. Finally, layer 6 has reciprocal connections with the thalamus. Now that we've discussed the connections formed by each layer, it is easier to understand what we observe with the Weigert stain. Exner's plexus is the name for the fibers in the molecular layer. The band of Bechteru is the name for the myelinated fibers in the superficial portion of layer 3. The outer and inner bands of Behlerger are myelinated fibers coursing through layers 4 and 5 respectively. Finally, there are the deep tangential fibers and the vertical fibers. Note that not every region of the cortex has the same number of layers. For example, the primary olfactory cortex has only three histological layers. If you like this video, like and subscribe. You can also support me by following the link to my Patreon. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment.